Welcome to our podcast, Charting the Course, presented by Emmanuel Church Apostolic Community. Our podcast will be presented by gifted teachers that are called, anointed, and appointed to expound upon the Word of God. We will be discussing various topics that are relevant to living a holy life today according to the Word. Patricia Gray, and I'm here today again with Ed Houston, and we are charting the course. We're going to continue to talk about salvation. What we ended off on, we were talking about, well, Ed was sharing how you could be all types of a person, however, we don't know, but God knows. And I just wanted to um, ask you to continue to talk about that. Yeah, like, well, just like I I said in the last uh, podcast that we did, um, Christ looks at the heart, not the outward. He looks at the heart. And, and it's a lot of times, you know, people do things that they really, they don't want to do it, but they don't know how to get out of it because they're in bondage to it. That's why, that's why our nature is to be in bondage to sin until a Savior comes, which is Christ Jesus. You know, one thing about salvation is salvation, I said earlier, it's a, to deliver you. But it's more than just a delivering, it's also a preserving. So not only will your salvation walk deliver you from sin, but it will also preserve you until the day of the coming of the Lord. And so when you talk about salvation, you're talking about totally giving yourself over to a a God that you don't see. Over to a, 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 a man, a son of God who gave his life on the cross because God required the shedding of blood for the remission of sins. So you got to have your sins remitted. And so that's all a part of the salvation plans to have your sins remitted. And the way that you have to do that first, you got to believe that Christ is, you got to believe that God is, and you got to believe that he's a rewarder that, you know, this thing is faith. Mm -hmm. It's by faith you take this on. Then you got to believe uh, in the in the gospel news, the uh, miraculous birth, the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Some people don't even believe that Christ rose from the grave. But, you know, they, they seem to be able to find everybody else's body and everybody else's bones, but they can't find his. Yes. And so, so we know that he did walk the earth indeed, and he gave his life. He rose on the third day, and he told his disciples to go and to Jerusalem and tarry there until they be endued with power. Where that power is another part of the Holy, the whole, another part of the salvation plan. That's what's going to preserve you is the Holy Ghost, yeah. because the Holy Ghost is your will seal you until the day of redemption. Now, so what you want to do is once you believe in Jesus Christ, you, you believe that. It, listen, if you believe that He is the Son of God and that He came for your sins to save you from your sins then what you do is you need to repent. And to repent means to be sorry for your sins. You don't want to continue to follow after the world order, but you want to follow after God. You want to follow after Christ. Then it tells you to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And that is to show that now I'm buried with Christ. The blood has been applied to my life, the blood of Christ. I am as white as snow. I have been cleansed from all my sins, and now I'm waiting on the promise of the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost comes, evidenced by speaking in tongues, now you are preserved. You have a preservation on your life. All right. And then you got to live holy. Okay. Let me ask that question because when you say you've been filled with the Holy Ghost and now you have been preserved, some have been in this walk believe as you have described, but have left out. And their thought or their concept is once saved, always saved. Where does that um, being preserved, where does that come in? Well, you know, being being preserved, that's just like, okay, let's take food for instance, right? Mm -hmm. You can put a preservative in a food and it'll last, as long as you store that food right Mm -hmm. or you keep that, food in the right place, that preservative will last for, man, almost forever. 
But you mess around and you put that preservative for that food in the wrong in the wrong place. Put it in the wrong light. Put it in the wrong temperature. Guess what? Oh, God. It's not gonna last. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna do it. So it's the same way when you when you are when you in Christ and you have received the Holy Ghost and you're trying to live a holy life. Now I'm saying you're trying to live a holy life. You fine. Because that's the confidence that we have in God that he's able to present us faultless. He's able to do that. He's able to keep us from falling. But then there's you, yourself. All right, talk about it. Now, we all got this carnality about us, right? And at any time, we could find ourselves walking against the will of God. Now, when that happens, you have only one recourse. That's to confess your faults. Mm -hmm. If you never confess your faults, then you have separated yourself from God. Why? Because sin separates us from God. So, in other words, you can't, just because you got the Holy Ghost don't mean you can go out there and keep on sinning. All right. But you got, and I don't, I don't know if this is the right way to say it, but this is the way I'm going to say it. You have an advantage over people who don't have the Holy Ghost. Yes. And your advantage is that the Holy Ghost will speak to you mm -hmm. and let you know, listen, I'm preserving you and you are wrong in what you're doing. You need to go back and get it straight. You need to stop doing that. You need what, whatever it may be. This is where I need you to go. I need you to be over here. I need you to be over. This is the, the difference. And so as long as you're being obedient and as long as it's if you do fall, see, because the Bible don't never tell you you're going to fall. It says if you fall, mm -hmm. that you know that immediately I need, to, I need to go to God and I need to ask him to forgive me for this. Then, yes, but once saved, always saved. No, because we in this flesh. And just because you got the Holy Ghost don't mean that you can't go astray. Mm -hmm. Because we say God is not in the I'm going to make you business. That way, if he, that's what it was all about, then we could have just been puppets. Mm -hmm. But we're not puppets. And God wants us to return his love just like he loves us. And the only way that we're going to do that, it's got to be out of our own mind our own volition to love God because that's what he said if you love me keep my commandments so when you don't do that then you separated yourself from the love of God and so guess what your person that 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 uh, preservative that you had in the Holy Ghost it grows thinner and thinner it's just like the Holy Ghost will come up he said you should have living waters mm -hmm. and guess what you draining all that water off Every time you go out there and you send a little bit more, you're draining some more of that. And every time you go out there and send some more, you're draining some more. Draining some more. And so sin, like I said, separates you. And if, if, if you close your eyes in sin, you cut off. That's it. Ain't no, ain't no praising God from the grave. That's right. You can't do it. And so once saved, I always say, yeah, I hear people say it too. Uh, God can say that mm -hmm. because he knows everything. No. But man can't say that, and it be true. That's like saying, that's like saying, uh, speak those things that aren't as if they were. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Try it. See yeah. where it gets you. Mm -hmm. You're going to be real disappointed because yeah. that doesn't work. And it's the same. Once saved, always saved is pretty much the same thing. Well, I'm sorry. So in the midst of it all, now we understand or you have enlightened us to know that the concept of once saved, always saved is a false belief. When you believe that you are able to go back into the same sinful world and the sinful desires and the sinful mind that you once had, your salvation, you are you on the borderline of losing your life to death, eternal death and damnation. But if you turn back and repent, you can be restored. Yeah, ab absolutely you can, because that's really what it's all about. Because remember, God is looking at your heart. You're not just saying, Lord, forgive me, just because well, if, I say I'm, if I say forgive me, he'll, he'll take me back. That's not your heart. Mm -hmm. Your heart is you're really sorry for what you did. Mm -hmm. And your plan is not to do it again. That's really what your heart is. Uh, once saved, I always say, let me get back, let me get back to that. The Bible says, work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. Okay, now if once you say you always say, what you got to work out? Mm. If you always say, what do you have to work out? Make a plan. You don't have anything to work out. And so you have to understand that no, this is a progress. This is a work. We we are works in progress. Okay. And that's what we have to do, is to work it out. Well. 
I thank you, Ed, for enlightening us even the more on salvation and to know that this is a process. Um, this plan of salvation is a process and we must be willing to do um, what is necessary in order for us to be in that plan. I am Patricia Gray. I'm here today with Ed Houston and we are charting the course.